e ngā iwi tēnā koutou katoa. It's God Save the King Day, so get ready to pledge your allegiance, or not, as the case may be. Either way, it's going to be a grand-scale event that'll take place in just a matter of hours. Europe correspondent Lisette Raymer is in position at Westminster Abbey. Lisette. Yes, after 70 years as heir to the throne, King Charles is now just hours away from fulfilling his destiny. It is getting to the point where it is hard to find a break in the chain of people lining the procession route, where King Charles will travel from Buckingham Palace here to Westminster Abbey at around 9.20 this evening, New Zealand time. The city is brimming with people, the country is bursting with pride, and today the Commonwealth will come together in celebration. Oh, just the way. They're already partying like it's 1953. <laughs> crowds out with crowns on, the class of King Charles cementing their spot on the sideline of history. It's so exciting. Everyone's here for the same reason. Seeing the king. And they'll do what it takes to catch his eye. They're a bit big ears, really, aren't they, to be fair? While the king will be decked out in diamonds and history, the coronation crowd's been getting their glad rags. From the internet. Come as you are is the motto, and everyone's invited. Yes, even Harry. The song filled the ear more than once, more than twice, and no one seemed to mind. We love it. Can't get enough. Royalists have been training for this moment as fervently as Charles has. They've got the pims, they've got champagne, yeah, yeah. well stocked. Veterans of royal shindigs sharing tips with new tenants of the Mall. You always pick where the loos are. And of course, stay minty fresh. That's the glamour of camping on Absolutely. the Mall. For His Majesty. I just did not want to be not invited to the biggest party ever. A four-year-old King Charles didn't seem all that chuffed to be at his mother's big bash, but she's keeping a watchful eye over his. I was involved in the Queen's funeral as um, one of the marching contingent. But that was quite a sad time and quite nice to be here for a happy time. Christchurch's Cole Brazier was here for the funeral too and the Platinum Jubilee before that. Honestly, all my money goes to this. Expensive camping trips, but priceless. I'd rather be here than in my bed in New Zealand, or else at Buckingham Palace, why not? Why not, he dared the skies. And as the thunder sounded overhead, the sunglasses honestly seemed optimistic. Are you worried about the rain? No, we'll just crack on. They were true to their word. But safety concerns mean more of this could spell the cancellation of the famous balcony flypast. As predicted by weather forecasters, things have just got very, very British indeed, but no one's spirits are dampened at all. This is going to be a celebration, whatever the weather. Yes, Still smiling. of course, we're British. Beaming out from beneath brollies and peeping out at the damage, campers were still drying off their royal companions when the real thing drove by. Their commitment paid off. The Sovereign and his son turning already excited crowds into dizzy ones. After days of King Charles being everywhere, eyes were double-taking. I'm sorry, I'm totally dumbstruck. The Princess of Wales added her well wishes to the walkabout. So we're going to as well. Even calling those who couldn't make it. I hope you get better soon. While the King made a solo exit to prepare for his grandest return. I'm so excited now, I don't know what tomorrow's going to be like. But if they had to take a guess of where it will rank in the days of their lives... The best. Yeah, you can't beat a coronation. The best is yet to come. So, Lisette, any sightings of the real Prince Harry there yet? Well, any sightings we have had have been incredibly brief. Just the motorcade whizzing by since he arrived in the country uh, yesterday. He has kept a very low profile, and now we have learnt that he has been relegated in the seating plan. He will sit three rows back in Westminster Abbey, well behind his father and his brother. In fact, he'll be between Princess Eugenie's husband and the late Queen's cousin. Harry and Meghan were both very late to even RSVP to the coronation. We know, of course, that Meghan has chosen to stay in California with the children and now we understand Prince Harry will be heading back to America as well within hours of the conclusion of the coronation. Lisa,
Kings, queens, princes, princesses and leaders from across the world gathered at Buckingham Palace for the King's reception ahead of his coronation. Around a thousand VIPs were invited, including Prime Minister Chris Hipkins, who met with his UK counterpart earlier in the day. Alexa Cook is live from Admiralty Arch and Alexa, a big crowd is building there. That's right, everyone's waiting here to get a glimpse of the king as he glides on past. Chris Hipkins will soon be walking past too, on a, and he's been at Downing Street earlier today where there was a wee treat waiting for him. Striding up to the British Prime Minister for a grip, grin and greet, Chris Hipkins even got a friendly pat on the back before getting down to business. Prime Minister, it's great to welcome you to the UK. Have a saucy, saucy treat. I know you like them. They were very good. The tomato sauce was particularly good too. Wattie's tomato sauce all the way from New Zealand. It wasn't his first pastry-wrapped prezi this week. The king gave him a doggy bag on Wednesday. How do they compare to the king's sausage rolls? Oh, now, I could get into a lot of trouble by uh, making those kind of comparisons. On to the main course, the war in Ukraine, the Indo-Pacific region and their free trade agreement. The relationship between New Zealand and the UK is the best it's been in a long time. Many relationships were being strengthened at Downing Street on Friday. And that's Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's meeting over and done with in about 30 minutes because he's one of a number of world leaders speed dating with Rishi Sunak today. Neither Albo or Chippy got a red carpet though, not like the Emir of Qatar, but even he was just one of many dignitaries starting their day here and ending it at Buckingham Palace for the King's reception, his last event before the coronation. The guest list included foreign royalty, the Māori King and the US First Lady, Jill Biden, a line-up from around the world who have really seen rubbing shoulders and an opportunity to strengthen Commonwealth ties. Not everyone could go, so around the corner, National Party leader Christopher Luxon was campaigning in a pub, meeting Kiwis living in London. Our next Prime Minister. Uh, well, we thought we'd try to get a picture of the man himself. I we'd go down to see Chris Luxon. So did Aucklanders Julian Gary, who flew to London last night, especially for the coronation. Because I'm a Charles fan, I always have been all my life. Because after all, this will be Britain at its best, so it's bound to be yeah. a jolly good show. Alexa, what are the crowds like there now? Well, they're really cramming in. The crowds here have been building and building over the last hour, all coming down the street to gather here and watch the king go past in a couple of hours. There's this sort of quiet sense of excited anticipation, I think, amongst the people here because they know they're about to watch this huge historic moment unfold. Now, there also are a lot of police here. They're shoulder to shoulder along the barriers to make sure no one jumps over and causes this scene. So, look, the countdown is, is really here at the moment. There's only a little while to go until we see the king. That's right. Thank you very much. That's Alexa Cook live there from London.